wants to do everything, who is sort of a perfectionist. I know that you are as a Virgo. How do you balance um, work with just making sure that you're, you know, protecting your peace? Um, I think I balance it. I, I think a good way to be able to achieve all your goals, whether they're work goals, professional girl, uh, personal goals, or personal goals. Yeah. Um, and so I think for many years, because I started so young, and, and the only thing that was important to me as a kid was my entertaining and you know what I was passionate about. For many years, I think I was putting a lot of other things on the back burner. Uh, mm -hmm. But as I got older and other things became more important to me, like my friends, friends are getting married, friends are having yeah. kids, and also my my emotional health, you know, just feeling kind of burnt out because I'm not realizing I want to take personal time. I started, you know, looking for help from my mom and other people to, like, help me figure out how to give my personal life the same respect that I give my working life yeah. and it really ended up being about scheduling the time it doesn't seem like it's important you think it, you know you're only supposed to use a schedule when it comes to oh hey tricky sorry I'm seeing people in the comment um, okay. you know you think um you know you think scheduling is only for prof your professional pursuits but no if you're a boss like that and you you know your time is valuable it's nothing wrong with scheduling in vacation time it's nothing wrong with scheduling in a yoga session or a pilates session or you know this dinner with this friend because they just graduated or they just did that x y and z and you don't want to miss it you know our lives revolve around more than our work and i think it's important in our you know hustling mentality that we remember that Putting those extra time, the extra time elsewhere is actually only going to make us better in mm -hmm. our professional aspirations. That's such an important note to, to, to highlight. And on that same vein, speaking of being intentional about time, um, again, going back to that, the fact that you do many things. You're not just an actress, actress you're a writer, you're a producer, you, you know, you are starting a new podcast, right? You're, you're starting a new podcast and you, Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to think of everything that you do, you're all <laughs> What's his name? Like, um, Girl, probably, yes. I probably missed something in there. But in all of that, um, I, I want to talk about, you know, sort of not being pigeonholed. You started out as a young actress and realized very early on that you could expand and do many other things beyond what you maybe really were initially passionate about. So can you, one, talk about how you came to that realization that you could do more than just one thing? And in that, how are you intentional in sort of determining what it is you're doing with your time and your energy? Say that last part about the time and energy. What, how do you determine what you're doing? How do you go about yeah. sort of okay. about? Mm -hmm. So I think as a kid, my mom always encouraged me to do multiple things. Like, you know, I started out singing in church and then she introduced me into acting. And then from there I was dancing. And so I, she always in, encouraged me. She said, you know, you're a vaudevillain. And vaudevillain is like an old term they use for way back in the day for people like Judy Garland or Shirley yeah. Temple or Mickey Rooney. And so she used to always tell me that I was like that, like I was a vaudevillain. And so I always felt so much pride um, in doing multiple different things. Like I didn't feel like I had to, had to pigeonhole myself. Now, having said that, when I got into traditional, you know, works as an entertainer, when I was coming up, you, you, it was almost like you could only do one thing, you know what I mean? Except for if you were working for Disney and Nickelodeon, which I think is why I found so much of my place there um, because they always allowed me to do multiple things. Now, as I got older, um, I started to really decide that I really want to do other things. And it was even hard for my mom to understand when I first told her that I wanted to do hosting. Yeah. Um, I wanted to try and do a talk show. And it was kind of very weird because it was like, okay, you, you know, that's usually for older people. And, yeah. you know, you're, you're a working actor. And you don't really need to do that. But I'm like, it's not really about that. It's about this is what my heart is telling me to do. This is what I'm guided as a creative to do. This is how I want to use my platform and my voice. So it's it's really bigger than what everybody else sees for me. And mm -hmm. I think that really was the key. It was me being confident enough to go with what I saw for myself. Mm -hmm. And in that, I had a great support system. Like, even though my mom didn't get the talk show, my dad did. So yeah. it was, like, really cool because it was, like, my mom is always the one that was always there for me and doing all the stuff with me. And it really meant a lot that my dad was like, hey, Kiki, if this is what you see for your heart, I'm over here and I'll support you too. I'll go to the meetings with you. I'll go do the stuff with you. And I think that situation on top of other situations where I decided to follow my voice despite what other people said, mm -hmm. those things gave me the confidence to know that at the end of the day, it's all about where what you feel you're going to be most of service, how you're going to use your platform, what it is you have to say, and if you have something to say. You know, if what you're saying is being guided by the spirit, then you can always count that it's the right thing to do. Now, if you feel like it's being guided by 
you know, uh, superficial validations like, oh, I want this money or I want this, then, then things are going to get tricky, love. Mm -hmm. But a good way to guide yourself is to buy, is by what your heart is saying and what you feel in your gut. I know it can be difficult, but, you know, it's just like the things that come to you that you just know, like, this is this is coming from the truest part of me, so I'm going to go with it, and, and that's that. Now, when it comes to dividing your time, I, I go back to scheduling. And this is the thing. Sometimes, I mean, God is always the author in my life, so sometimes I'll think I'm going left. But then things will come around where it's like, oh, no, you're going right right now. So I'll put that stuff to the side and I'll say, okay, this isn't the time right now because God is pushing me towards this. This is the deal that came through. So if this is the deal that came through, then love, we're going to be focused on the deal that came through and keep writing down these ideas for this other thing. So at the end of the day, it's like you schedule, you plan, you put things together, and then God comes in and says, hey, this is what's really happening right now. Yeah. So you got to be flexible in that as well because, you know, at the end of the day, the universe decides. Yep. I feel like I heard something the other day. I wrote it down, this quote, like, be intentional about your goals, but flexible about your methods. Like, sometimes Woo! you freak out, right? Like, you know, and that's so, it. That's yeah, the yeah. truth. That's it, yeah. because I believe we all can end up where it is we want to get to, right? Yeah. But it's, it's us not being rigid in how we're going to get there. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I want to stay on that um, because I feel like you have universal advice, even for someone who's not in entertainment. For sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, earlier this year, we had For Forbes of Culture hosted its inaugural conference. It was called Culturally Accountable. And it was all about, one, holding workplaces and employers accountable, holding yourself accountable, um, but also just being intentional about how authentic you are in the roles, sort of in the jobs that you're holding. Um, yes. And space that you're taking up. And I was reading um, an article the other day, I think it was Harper's, and you were talking about how you have not been afraid to challenge, whether it was a director or whether it was someone you were working with, you bring authenticity to anything that you do. How, you know, can you talk about that? Like, how are you emboldened to be authentic in the work that you're doing? Like, how, where does that come from? And, and how do you make sure that that's part of your time? I think, you know, I always, defer to like I think I have a great support system because it's not easy to always assert yourself in the workplace I feel like I got the confidence um you know I, the confidence in doing that was encouraged by my mother and I always knew that I had she had my back now as I got older those things change right depending on where I wanted to you know really stand out at the end of the day we all want to stand out in our work we all want to be acknowledged we all want our voices to be heard um and, and that journey for all of us whether it is entertainment or whether it's working in a corporate office it, it always has its struggles because you're dealing with misogyny you're dealing with you know competing competing with your peers you're dealing with you know there are a bunch of people in this office that all want to be noticed and, and we're all trying to figure it out. So I think the number one thing is staying true to yourself. Again, it's, it sounds so basic and so blah, but it really is true. Staying true to yourself and yep. being consistent. It all lies in the consistency because whatever they might not be looking at now, if that's you, when they come in and looking for that, they're going to know where to find it. Mm -hmm. So don't try to switch around and, and try to, uh, you know, hop on that next trend or hop on the next idea that you think is going to get you there. Stay true to you and working on whatever your skill asset is and perfecting that. So when it's time for that or when someone's looking for that or when there's another opportunity elsewhere, you'll be like, hey, I have the credentials for this. This is what I've been doing X, Y, and Z. So I think that's a big thing because we all get nervous and then we end up feeling like, oh, I got to do what they're doing and I've got to hop on this train. Um, and then also, don't feel like you have to subject, like, no matter where you're working or what you're, you're trying to achieve, don't feel like you have to subject yourself to negativity because that's not going to help you thrive. A lot of times we feel like, oh, I, I want to get ahead in my job, so I'm going to go hang out with the boys club, and yeah. I'm going to go do this with them and be a part of stuff that you really don't have fun in and that you really, it's, it actually is making you feel worse in the workplace and you feel more ostracized and you feel more isolated and less inspired. So it's like, no, you don't have to do that. That, yeah, maybe you want to get in that bag, but get into that bag by just doing the work. Yep. Take your exit out that office and go around the people that inspire you. Be around the people that encourage you to be able to walk into the office and share your ideas and not have to feel like you have to do it in the way they want you to do it. You know, it's important that we go where the love is, yep. you know, in our lives, for whatever we're trying to accomplish. We have to go where the love is because that's what's going to help lead us down the, the path that's really going to get us to where we ultimately want to be at. Hey, Evan. <laughs> Seeing so many fun people in the chat, all my folks that I know is in the chat. Hey, y'all! Getting so many shout outs. Yeah, so um, 
I, I love that. And I think, um, you know, that just leads me to my next point, which is that part of being sort of empowered is identifying when to say no and when to walk away. And I think that that is, you know, just as true sort of out in the field working in entertainment as it is in the corporate office. So do you have any advice? Like, I, I think this is a year, I keep saying it, but this is a year of accountability, like holding yourself accountable, holding other people accountable. Um, do you have any advice uh, for someone, whether it's like, you know, someone working in the corporate office or someone who's trying to get out there in entertainment um, on the front of like how to say, like how to identify um, when you should say no or when or how you should go about trusting your gut and knowing mm -hmm. this is not, this is not the workplace for me. This is yeah. not the project or the, you know, this is not the movie. This is not the podcast for me. How do you identify that feeling and how do you, how do you act? Hey, Rebecca Simmons. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I think it, it all derives from the thing of, checking in with yourself and mm -hmm. asking yourself how you're feeling and if you're in a situation or you're in an environment that's conducive to your mental health again we have got to be our very first friends we've got to have our own backs the same way we would if a homegirl of ours or a homeboy of ours was saying hey my work my job is making me depressed we would tell them you know you got to get out of this situation and nobody wants to hear that 